Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I want to talk about why I love abstract painting. You see, abstract painting gets a bad rap. If you look at a lot of abstract art out there, I can see why a lot of people don't like it. You know, there's uh, there are some not so great abstract paintings out there, or some really weird ones, and a lot of it looks like it's done by kids, or at least that's the argument that I've heard a thousand times. I'm thirsty, hold on. <laughs> Oh look, my cup says dad, because I'm a dad. Anyway, point is, uh, I get it. You know, you could look at any of the art that I've done or other abstract artists have done and say, that looks like it was done by kids. <laughs> Here's the really sad part is, there are kids out there making abstract art that have their own exhibitions. So I totally understand that point. That, you know, for someone who doesn't like or appreciate abstract art, it's easy to look at art like that and say, you know, something like this, a kid did that, or, you know, it looks like, so I could do that. You know, that's totally understandable. And when I, years ago, before I even became an abstract artist myself, I probably followed that same sentiment because I didn't really appreciate art. I didn't really care about it, didn't know anything about it. And I had seen abstract art. I had seen the works of Jackson Pollock and stuff and other artists, but didn't really know or understand what it was. It wasn't until uh, it kind of hit me emotionally that I was converted into a believer. Now, just because I like abstract paintings doesn't mean that I like all of them. All art is not equal, but you could say that about realist paintings or naturalist paintings. You could say that about some artists out there and other artists not being as good. My point is, is that I love abstract art or painting because to me it's about the, the creative emotional output of the piece. You see, the difference with a realistic or naturalist painting, surrealist painting, anything where it has an object that you can identify, the difference between looking at that and looking at an abstract piece is kind of the difference between a logical and an emotional um, decision. You see, when you look at something where you can identify what's going on in the painting, you take it as the face value. And that actually might take more technical skill. So we can appreciate something that represents or resembles something that we see in the real world because that thing uh, is closer to what we know. It's more comfortable. But it also we also tend to acknowledge, or at least I do, that a painting that resembles something like these hyper-realism paintings that are out there now where the detail is so fine that it looks like a photograph, that is phenomenal. And I respect the heck out of that. But see, that comes from the time and the overall skill of that piece. Most abstract art doesn't require that level of detail. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't detailed abstract paintings out there, because there are, but something like the works of Jackson Pollock, which is how I kind of got started, was being fascinated with Jackson Pollock's work. You know, looking at his work on the surface level, yeah, you could say that it didn't take much technical skill. And looking at his drip paintings especially, yeah, that's probably true. You know, he threw the paint on the canvas and that was it. Like, he just threw layers and layers of paint on the canvas, slinging it on there. And let's be honest, that doesn't take a whole lot of skill. But the thing is, is that it's not necessarily about the skill in that debate, you know, it, looking at that that kind of artwork. It's more about what it represents as a whole. You see Jackson Pollock and even other artists that I admire like Gerard Richter or Ian Davenport. See, Gerard Richter does these really large scrape paintings where he puts paint on there and he just scrapes it across. Again, that doesn't necessarily take a long time to do or a, an abnormal amount of skill to do or like an even Davenport. Ian Davenport does these, I'll put a picture of one of his paintings here, but basically Ian Davenport uh, actually creates these paintings where he just drips paint down the canvas and it's just lines of paint. And I've seen people copy that, mimic that. You know, I've seen people mimic Jackson Pollock's work or Gerard Richter. These are all people that I respect and follow and have been inspired by. But the thing is, is that their paintings don't necessarily require a ton of skill 
per se. It doesn't require a lot of, you know, technical application to create these types of paintings. So let's be honest and, and both admit that because I think we can agree on that. But where the abstract painting shines is that it also creates an image that is very unique and it represents kind of the creative process to that artist. So while it may not take as much time or skill to create uh, abstract painting as it would a realist painting, naturalist surrealism, anything like that. What it does create is kind of this pause effect, if you will. And I've heard this a lot about Jackson Pollock's work where people have criticized it just seeing it on, you know, on pictures or in movies because, you know, he's referenced a lot where they just don't really get it. However, those same people have gone to museums and seen one of his works, you know, being as massive as they are, you know, bigger than what you see even in the wall behind me, which is probably a 10 foot span, something even bigger than that, seeing something so grand and seeing all these intricate, vivid lines, or even seeing a, a Rothko, which is, again, bigger than what you're even seeing here. A Rothko, which is just a couple of colors in squares. That people have been inundated with emotion just standing before something so grandiose. And that comes from a more visceral place. It's not as logical as, as seeing something that resembles something that you can connect with. You see, I think what we respect about Mona Lisa or, you know, works of Van Gogh or Monet, where it's things that you can easily recognize, you know, oh, it's, you know, a tower with stars or, you know, it's a bridge or, you know, it's a landscape or, you know, whatever it is. You know, when you look at something that you recognize, it's easy to say, okay, I like that because I know what it is. But when you look at abstract art, you're, you know, what the hell is that? What is, what is that supposed to represent? What is this supposed to, these are paintings I made if you didn't know, by the way. But what are these supposed to represent? And the answer is they're not necessarily supposed to represent anything. They're just expressions of creativity. So the reason I appreciate and, and love abstract art is because it's not about representing things that we've seen it's about representing things that we feel or think to me abstract painting is almost like taking a dream that you had and putting it into painting form you see a lot of times we have dreams and we don't understand those dreams or we don't remember them we just have a feeling that they gave us or maybe it's the feeling that we have looking at you know something else that we can't explain or uh, you know maybe it's this a uh, nostalgic feeling you know it's something that you feel that you can't explain right put into words that's kind of how I feel about abstract paintings that they make you feel a certain way you see when you look at something you can recognize something that represents something else you automatically know what that is but when you look at an abstract painting what does that mean what does what is it supposed to represent well sometimes they represent something to the artist and sometimes they don't. I mean, honestly, a painting that I've done that's just lines may not necessarily represent anything to me, but it expresses something that I feel inside that I couldn't otherwise put into any other medium. It's, it's almost like if you were trying to write a book based on a dream, it would be very abstract, you know? So my point out of all this is that I love abstract painting and I love abstract work in general because it expresses things that can't or aren't seen. It expresses the way that the artist feels, uh, maybe feels about themselves or the world around them or the way that they think that they, they just couldn't put that otherwise. And by putting it into an abstract painting, whether it's lines or squares or splashes or, you know, um, you know, streaks or whatever, that artist is trying to take something that they feel and put it into a medium that would best express that feeling. So I think that that's what I love about abstract art the most or abstract paintings in general is that it's expressing something that can't be readily expressed any other way. 
it's very hard to take an abstract idea or thought that you have in your head and put that into uh, you know a representational form you you almost can't do that so, so how do you you know describe a feeling you know how would you put that into form yes you could tell a story but a story is very structured the point of abstract art is to convey emotion or feeling or an idea and that is what you know the works of Jackson Pollock or Gerard Richter or you know uh, Mark Rothko kind of do they express things that don't make any sense feelings or emotion or some kind of visceral urge within them into it even a slightly structured environment i mean rothko used squares pollock used lines um you know P picasso used lines um you know like i said ian davenport uses colors you know uh, almost like a large rainbow or prism almost you know these these artists are putting just raw things into even a structured form. And if you look at it that way, yes, there's, we're still giving structure to something that is unstructured, like colors or shapes. So ultimately, to me, I think that that's why I love abstract painting. I also love it because every artist conveys that differently. Even if the methods are kind of similar, um, you know, they still have their own touch to it. So it makes it a little bit unique. So anyways, that's just kind of a rant, but I wanted to share that on why I love abstract painting because yeah, there's good and bad art, art out there. I've talked about this elsewhere. There's good and bad art everywhere. You know, doesn't matter if it was abstract or not. There's good and bad artists in the world. And, you know, I think you can tell uh, a level of skill from an artist regardless of the subject matter. Anyways, if you like this video, please let me know. If you didn't, that's fine. You can let me know. Um, but be sure to like it, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you then. Bye, guys.